school committee meeting for Wednesday, June 13th, 2018. We'll start by reading our vision statement, which is the Ashland Public Schools will be a model district that embraces the academic and social emotional growth of all students through a supportive, collaborative, and challenging experience. Our students will develop into lifelong learners who will contribute positively to society. Our agenda for the evening um, is our call to order, which we've just done, opening procedures and agenda review and adoption, followed by recognitions and student presentations, which will have recognition of 2018 retirees and the Student Advisory Council. In our areas of public comment, and I'm gonna ask the committee to remind me to do public comment, because I always forget. <laughs> um, items of interest to the public are the Ashland Innovation Center, the Recognition Subcommittee Update and Presentation, Mendez School Improvement Plan, Bilingual Parent Advisory Council Proposal, AHS Student uh, Activities Account Model United Nations Treasury, uh, Matt, the Middle School Student Activities Subaccount Timepiece Newspaper, Approval of District-Wide Co-Curricular Advisor Position Instructional Grant Coordinator, coordinator and approval of a stipend for instructional grant coordinator, a student travel request for the AHS Make-A-Wish Club to Florida in November 2018. We'll have then administrative um, items, the superintendent's report, assistant superintendent's report, warrant approvals from Ms. Bates. Um, we have no policy updates tonight. And our consent actions then will have the approval of minutes for May 23rd, acceptance of any gifts, committee reports and activities, member updates and action items. Um, members of the school committee, is that agenda acceptable? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you. So with that, our first item on the agenda is recognitions and student presentations, recognition of the 2018 retirees. Mr. Adams. Great, thank you, Mr. Terry. Uh, packed crowd tonight, if you can't see us here. Uh, it's, it's always a uh, special night to recognize our retirees from the Ashland Public Schools and uh, to celebrate all that they've given us and all of the time and effort spent with our children, uh, most importantly, in, in molding and shaping uh, the students of the future. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first retiree this evening, and then the principals will introduce the retirees from their respective uh, buildings. But uh, I said this probably, I don't know, a couple months ago, I think when Pat was here um, doing a presentation, that uh, we we're very fortunate to have uh, Ms. Pat White uh, as our preschool director for the past 25 years. Uh, all that she's brung or brought uh, to the, uh, the school system and the conversations that she and I have had and capped off with another one this morning uh, that I'm so thankful that the preschool back in 1993 with Dr. Roosfield uh, working through developing the preschool and growing it to uh, a place where um, our children, it's probably Mr. Vieira's and I favorite spot to go to uh, in the district because everyone's smiling and they're happy uh, and then you walk into the We Watch room uh, for our littlest uh, of, of clockers uh, within the community and, uh, and they're students of our, of our teaching staff, and they're children of our teaching staff. Um, so on behalf of myself, our administrative team for being a part of our team, uh, my nine years here have been um, fruitful because of you. I really appreciate the time and effort you spent with me uh, and would like to present you a plate that says uh, to Patricia White, 25 years devoted service to the Ashland Public Schools, uh, June 21st, 2018. I do not see Ms. McKee here, so we will uh, skip over to the David Mendez School. Mr. Kyra? Hi, we have um, two individuals who are retiring who have served the, the Mendez Elementary School. Uh, first, we want to talk about uh, Miss Wendy Schneider, who has not only served the Mendez School, but she's also served as a uh, CODA or a Certified ocu Occupational Therapy Assistant across the district for the last 18 years. Uh, and, and Wendy is an amazing advocate for all the students on her caseload. Uh, she services many of our youngest learners on a regular basis. 
and that's, that's how I have witnessed Wendy, um, but I do know that she helps out students at the high school and the middle school as well, uh, constantly servicing them in terms of making sure they're getting exactly what they need, when they need it, all the time, whether it be during a pullout session or during uh, an inclusion setting in their classroom, as well as during meetings. Uh, Wendy adds such tremendous value and, and provides parents with such great advice with how they can help their children at home. So for 18 years, she's done this, and she served the students of Ashland quite well. We wish you well in your retirement, Wendy. I know there'll be lots of plans, and I'm sure running will be part of that. So <laughs> enjoy it. Thank you. And the school committee has a, a, another plate for you as well, which reads, Wendy Schneider, 15 years <coughs> devoted service to the Ashland Public Schools, June 21st, 2018. So our, our next retiree uh, is pretty much become synonymous with the Mendez School. Uh, for 17 years of her 27 years within the Ashland Public School District, Janet Crawford has worked as a physical education teacher at Mendez. Uh, I think anybody who goes through the Mendez Elementary School leaves with a couple major memories. And every one of those major memories is directly related to an event that is run and was probably even started by Mrs. Crawford. Our physical education teachers work together, and I know that she's certainly going to miss uh, her work husband, Dan Powers, tremendously. <laughs> I think he'll probably, I think he'll probably miss her a little bit more than she misses him. But it, it's, it's going to be uh, a huge loss for our students and our staff. Uh, I, I'm, I'm quite, certain that Mrs. Crawford is a staff favorite and folks will be missing her dearly, especially when it comes time for the events that she's run, such as the Mud Run, the Spooky Run. Uh, she brought us the Mendez Marathon, which is a favorite of everyone, Aces Day, the Hold Down, the Turkey Trot, our Walk to School Days, Intramurals, and the Jumpathon. So her <laughs> impact on the lives of students is immeasurable and we certainly wish you the best in your retirement mrs crawford Janet crawford 27 years devoted service to the ashland public schools june 21st 2018. and mrs crawford yes. i'll have you stay there for a moment uh, only because uh you know Quite, quite often, uh, during, during the beginning of the year, we, we have recognitions of staff as well for uh, amount of service that they've, they've put into uh, the Ashland Public Schools and teaching, et cetera. And uh, Janet uh, reminded us that, hey, I didn't get my award at the beginning of the year. And she's right, she didn't. And, and she's much deserving of, of the clock that we give out for over 25 years of service. So Janet, I have it here today. <laughs> Tonight I'm here to speak about Ms. Maureen Welzell, who's retiring after 32 years, most of which have been at Ashland Middle School. Although when we talked earlier, she had served additional time as a, a para and various other responsibilities. So she has about 40 years in education. So she started when she was about seven or eight years old, I think is about right. Um, Maureen uh, at, the, at the middle school in sixth grade, it, there's not a, there couldn't have been a better place uh, for her. Coming, when I came in six years ago and met Maureen and was in her classroom, uh, she truly understands the development lo developmental level of those sixth grade students. She makes connections with those students. She knows what those students need on a daily basis. Um, if there's a student who needs support, who needs help beyond the class setting, beyond the content, beyond organization, if there was a family who needed support, 
a student was struggling for some reason, Maureen would be the first one knocking on my door saying, here's what's happening and here's what this student needs, uh, which I think I appreciated most about her. There wasn't a student who didn't need that support where she wouldn't be trying to make that connection. Um, and she's been doing it a, a long time. I know I appreciated that. I know her colleagues so respect her, um, her opinion, her background, her knowledge, um, and she is going to be sorely missed by her colleagues, but certainly most of all the students and the families that have been fortunate enough to have her over the past 32 plus years uh, at the middle school. So we're going to miss her. We wish her the best of luck. I know Maine is in is in her future to spend uh, quite a bit of time. I know she's looking forward to it, and she's certainly it's certainly well deserved. So uh, we certainly wish. Maureen Wells, all, all of the best and congratulations on her retirement. Congrats, Maureen. Uh, Ashland High School has three retirees this year. Michelle Riccio has been a valued ESP for the special education department for the past 14 years. She started as a one-on-one -on -one student, one-on-one uh, -on -one assistant to a student on the autism spectrum, and we were lucky enough to be able to keep her when that student graduated. In her time at AHS, she has assisted in every level of classes, from CP1 all the way up to AP. Michelle is a calm, caring person who helps students succeed by guiding them through the learning process. Teachers and students alike fought to be able to work with Michelle. She will definitely be missed. Michelle Rescio, 14 years devoted service to the Ashland Public Schools, June 21, 2018. Our second retiree is DJ Jost, who has taught at Ashland High School for the past 16 years, but actually started her teaching career in Ashland Public Schools in 1980 when she worked for one year as a music teacher before the program was cut. DJ has taught students at every level from CP1 to honors. Mike Shannett, her department liaison, describes her as always willing to take on any teaching assignment and do what is needed to uh, meet the needs of the students. DJ is known for her enthusiasm and her energy in the classroom. She's often found bouncing around. Uh, mm -hmm. Besides teaching, she was actively involved in so many aspects of Ashland High School, from playing the pit band at musicals to emceeing the bingo night for student council to getting the student ambassadors program up and running to make sure that new students always felt welcome, uh, just to name a few of her passions. Her passion and smile will definitely be missed at Ashland High School. Donna Jean Jost, 17 years devoted service to the Ashland Public Schools, June 21, 2018. And last but not least is Martha Thompson, who has been a special education teacher at Ashland High School for the past 26 years and a witness to many of the changes in the field of special education. She has been an integral part of both the special education and math departments and served as the special education department head for many years. Martha took on helping students in the area of math as her area of specialty and co-taught many math classes over the years. She helped to design curriculum and meet the needs of all of our different learners. She's been a role model for the department for many years and her strong presence will definitely be missed. Martha Thompson, 26 years devoted service to the Ashland Public Schools, June 21st, 2018. To recognize from the Warren School, Linda McKee, uh, for the last two years I've had the great opportunity to be able to work and learn with Linda on a daily basis. Linda's work has been outstanding. I was commenting to a few individuals uh, downstairs earlier tonight 
of I hope that I have the drive that she has at, at that point in my career. Uh, Linda, over these two years, has volunteered to be on each and every volunteer committee in our school to make sure she's supporting our students and our families of saying, how do we improve our school? She's that dedicated individual that not just cares about her classroom and making sure that she's reaching those students, but all the students in our school. And she has an invested interest with her grandchildren in our school as well. Uh, Linda's been an outstanding colleague to her, to her partners in the grade level, to our school, and I will miss having the opportunity to work with her each and every day. So we'll just read briefly. Linda McKee, 18 years devoted service to Ashland Public Schools, June 21st, 2018. You want to take that on her behalf? Deliver tomorrow? Yes, please. It'd be great. And before I bid you adieu for the evening, uh, would all of the um, recipients tonight please stand up and we can get a picture right here in front of facing out that way? <laughs> please and thank you. I know there are other people who want pictures, so. Yeah, we'll just pause here. Bring your plates. <laughs> Bring your plates, though, yes. Hold your plates. And should you want the boxes the plates are in, they're outside with your name on them. So <laughs> you're welcome to grab. Thank you once again to all of you for your service over the years. Thank you. You're all free to go. You are all free to go. Please. Thank you for coming. You don't want to be here for the next couple hours with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you, folks. <laughs> yeah, right. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, DJ. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Student Advisory Council. Would our council like to come and provide their update? Hello. Good evening. Sorry. Um, hi. Hi. Um, thanks for having us again. Thank you for coming. Um, so we have our new council here, some of the... Well, you know us too. We're back, <laughs> and then we what, have some for the camera. Why don't you just introduce yourselves as right. you speak? Right. Um, I'm Nicole Abatini. Um, so some things that have been going on: uh, the National Honor Society um, just donated seven thousand two hundred dollars to Community Giving Tree. Uh, it presented the check, and it was a great thing. They were very appreciative. Um, yep. Thank you. Hi again. Um, I'm Olivia Beaton, um, and I'm a rising senior. And my update is that NHS will be holding a meeting Monday after finals for any freshmen, sophomores, or juniors who are planning to apply next year or the year after that um, to inform them about what is NHS and what our charity is because we really want to bring a bigger presence to our school this year because I know when I was a freshman and sophomore, I didn't really know what NHS was. So we're really trying to um, amp up NHS in our school so we really want to get that information out there. So yeah, they'll be happy Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Hallie Silver. I'm a rising junior. And um, my update is that we just held class elections for all new class officers. Um, we clearly had the school committee elections. Um, we also, Senator Spilka's um, advisory council um, also have been elected for those. That was run by student council. They did a really great job. And we have all new officers. So. Thank you. Hi, my name is Caroline Ellis, and I'm going to be a sophomore next year. Um, Make-A-Wish just got their goal of granting a third wish uh, by raising a total of $8,000. And uh, we just had class day, which was before graduation, which is, was a great event. Uh, and all the students got to say bye to their senior friends as they walked out and then went to go walk around 
all the Ashland schools. So yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Nermeen Eldon. I'm going to be a sophomore next year, and we're just about to start finals on Friday, and getting ready for all the summer work from all the different classes that we have to do. I scoffed at that, but I shouldn't because I have college to worry about. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the seniors enjoyed a beautiful senior week. We went to Canopy, Kimball Farm, and the Spirit of Boston Cruise, and we had absolutely fantastic weather for all three days, which was great. Um, for class day, um, we had a wonderful speech by Jess Benedictus, our class president, and thanked Ms. Toomey and Miss um, Graham for both stepping up and being our class advisors. Um, and I actually got to show the uh, slideshow that I've been working on for four years, which was really <laughs> nice. Um, and then for graduation, we heard speeches from the salutatorian Niraj and valid Victorian Sabrina, and it was a beautiful ceremony. Um, I'm thankful for going through this wonderful school system, and I wouldn't have wanted to go through any other one. And thank you all for thank you. organizing yeah, it. Sure. So Julia, stay there. <laughs> We would like to thank you for your contributions to the discussions here and being the student council representative. I think of, of my experience over the three years, you have contributed as much as any in terms of your thoughtfulness and your um, concerns and considerations of the subjects we're talking about. From day one, you've shown a willingness um, to contribute to the dialogue and for us, that's really important because we haven't been students in a long time um, and to really appreciate and understand the student perspective that you've offered has been fantastic. So thank you very much for your contributions over this year, and we have a little something for you. Oh, thank you, Julia. Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, really? Take a look. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, you can just, just the stand, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nicole? Thank you again, Julia. And you're free to leave. You've graduated. You, you can just grab your stuff and yeah. see it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Nicole, <laughs> now, so, so who is our next representative? I know. Uh, I do. Um, oh, Nicole Abatini will be uh, joining us. And Great. since you all have finals, you're welcome to go home tonight, too. Yeah. And, and we will, unless you want to stay. I actually can stay. I, okay. I was forward to this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Awesome. So, well, join we us. We have an extra chair, right? Awesome. We have an extra chair. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. I should stay too. You, there's no need. Yeah, once you graduate, your responsibilities were done. This we were just waiting the for the UVM election. Thing. We just wanted you here to, to receive the uh, recognition. Thank you for coming. Everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Have yeah. a great See summer. You next time. And you can leave that for Julie or for uh, Nicole, the, the agenda. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you gotta get her nameplate. Now we'll get a nameplate. Take your nameplate, uh, Julia. Uh, oh, I can take it. Yeah. And no one else has named Julia Sicard. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we all went all out on that one. Thank you, Julia. Thank, Thank you, Julia. Good luck, good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck at good school. Luck. Good luck at UVM. Oh, I mean UMass. Sorry. <laughs> you just can't take the Vermont out of the boy, can you? All right. So, welcome, welcome aboard. Thank you. Congratulations on your election. Thank you. Um, Actually, I'm looking forward to this. This is my third year on the advisory council. Turn. Yeah, awesome. Great. Well, we certainly welcome you to contribute freely to the dialogue. Um, your, your opinions are important to us. So on the next item on the agenda um, is public comment. I didn't forget it this time. Is there any member of the public who is here to make a comment? Okay. Seeing none, we will move to the uh, items of interest to the public. Number two is the Ashland Innovation Center AH, AHS Makerspace, Chad McGowan. Mr. McGowan. Thanks for staying. <laughs> <laughs> They're not allowed to leave. <laughs> 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 
All right, let's see if I can get this up and running. All right, here we go. Hi, thanks for having me. Hi. Thank you for in coming. Again. In. Thank you for coming. It's uh, I appreciate the invite and uh, opportunity to share a little bit. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. You are looking at our brand new logo that the students, you know, they had stuff up on the wall for much of the year, and they finally had decided on and created this digital version of our logo. Um, so I'm really happy to have that. You'll probably see it on a lot of things over the next uh, year. The year has been a busy one, for sure. We um, started the year pretty much last year by uh, when we got the grant awarded by the AFI, and that afforded us the opportunity to really think big about what we wanted to do. And we're putting into place a five-year plan this being year one uh, of that plan, actually kind of, we had a alpha, you know, an alpha year, if you will, before that. So one of the things that happened early to us in this year was a article was placed in the US News and World Report um, that highlighted the work that we were doing already and kind of the vision that we had set forth. So I thought that was a really neat way to start our year and we really appreciate the effort that was put in to have that article published. Uh, Vissi Talek did that right up. So what we've been doing this year is a combination of in-school and after-school programs that students have been participating in. The after-school program targets uh, middle school on Mondays, Mendez school on Tuesdays, and high school on Wednesdays. By creating these opportunities for students to come in, we've also created a group of students who call themselves, or we call them now, the, the Makerspace Mentors, who help lead all these after-school activities um, and have built their own leadership. They really feel an ownership over the Ashland Innovation Center in a way that has greatly benefited us in terms of just having everything, um, having a student voice that we can bounce ideas off of, but also more often receive ideas from. So here we're seeing some photos of some students that were involved in the after school program. We had 3D printing, we had 3D design, so you can see the giant. Uh, for those of you not familiar, on the far left there is something out of the, um, why can't I think of it? Minecraft. Uh, yes, Minecraft. Minecraft, thank you. <laughs> the Minecraft world <laughs> and, um, you know, so not everything we do has to be digital. And we encourage the kids, you know, the making is going to incorporate technology and some of the creative ideas are going to have very little to do with technology. And the students are just working in all kinds of mediums within the space. Uh, here are some more students at work. The, um, we had a couple of programs this year where we actually offered the program with a premium, allowing students to actually purchase um, hardware in terms of technology that they could then go home and continue learning on. So instead of just coming into the space, it being like, oh, that's neat, and then leaving after five weeks and not having access again, we provided those opportunities, we got the materials um, at good prices that we could then allow them uh, to not only participate, but take materials home. Um, so you see some of these, they're using a tool called the Makey Makey, we also have some 3D printing going on uh, in these shots. 
And here is uh, back in the fall, our Makerspace oh, mentors shopping. were able to present at MassQ, which is the largest technology, uh, you know, it's computer using educators is the Q part. And it's the largest of its kind in Massachusetts, uh, probably in all of New England. And they were one of the student presentation groups, as you can see, uh, Mr. Adams was there, as well as several administration, uh, Ms. Henry and myself. Um, and we also have help from other adults, uh, Ms. Marshquist at the high school and Jeannie Young from Community Ed. The four of us really kind of play different roles but help keep this program rolling from the adult side. And these are just four of our kids, we can only take four, but there's about 10 kids who help mentor in the after school session. And they've elected leadership for next year and they're, they're really well organized. So in school we have, um, or in the high school, we have a number of ways that students are getting involved. The um, students are involved through courses. So we run the Student Technology Help Desk course that we've run for a few years. We gave those students an opportunity to work in that space this year. And we saw them doing such projects as the pinball machine and um, student who created an electric guitar. We also, invited courses to come in and use the space. That's a really difficult, challenging thing to figure out how to fit those in when other classes are going on. Um, so we experimented with that a couple of times. The game design class came in. You can see the uh, dice there that students actually designed and printed their own dice onto blank dice, um, coming up with their own concepts for what they wanted things to represent. And then we had, most recently, Miss Toomey brought her uh, American history course in and they did this amazing array of projects. They were building artifacts for a museum to represent different dec decades in American history and uh, the results are currently on display in the high school and will continue to be on display through um, at least the next week or so. Um, in the top right is another student project. So I just came in and said I want to make this as a gift and it was a box that they created a swivel top to, and used various machines to, to get that done. And some more student projects, the guitar, that fan you see in the middle, um, everything but the motor, um, all 3D printed. They designed and printed the entire thing. Um, and then the rock and roll, that's the uh, good old jukebox there on the left, that was built in the uh, makerspace just last week. And some of the tools that we've been able to get, we have an awesome tool shed full of uh, small power tools and hand tools of all sorts, purchasing some woodworking equipment like the drill press and the scroll saw. We also have a fabrication center which allows students to do 3D printing. Uh, on the right bottom is the carvey which carves into wood uh, or other types of materials. And the most recent addition on the left-hand side, the Glowforge, is our laser cutter, which is a phenomenal machine that you take almost any design and it can put it out onto acrylic, onto wood, it can cut out shapes. Um, so with all of that in place, that's the end of my slides, but with all that in place, we're now gearing up for year two in which we're introducing a couple of new classes. We have a new art course called Create where students will be working in the makerspace, um, learning how to use the makerspace to develop original artwork. Um, so instead of just creating art that's on a computer screen or on a poster board, they're gonna be developing artwork that can be outputted into many of these fabrication machines. We also have a new course called Make. That is a mixture of students learning how to use the makerspace and incorporating it into lessons. And they're gonna actually be learning how to educate. So this was inspired by our after school mentors and we wanted to create a course that really gave students a foundation for how do I go about teaching lessons and, and thinking about setting objectives. And um, so Ms. Henry at the high school and myself have been working on developing that course and we'll be running that next year. Uh, in addition, we expect to see some other classes continue to use the space and uh, really continue to refine 
or expand different ways that the space can be used. So I think I've said enough. Yeah. Anybody have any questions for Mr. McGowan? This is awesome great. stuff. Yeah. 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 yeah, no, it's really great. Yeah. Of course, I think this might be the parent in me. What, what are the safety measures <laughs> around all that stuff? I'll, I'll, when you said laser, I just thought <laughs> they yeah, so so <laughs> so <laughs> so Yeah, this is, all, this is all great uh, questions. We are, um, so each machine has its own safety parameters in terms of what it comes with, but also what do we need to do in the space to ensure that we're, we're being safe. Um, and some of the things like the laser cutter which you know it is a high power laser but it's designed in such a way that the complete case is self-contained it shuts down if anybody tries to access like open the machine up um, it has exhaust vent that goes out the window the woodworking materials uh, we're installing shutoffs that we can shut off from across the room uh, through remote control we also keep everything locked up so the devices, I shouldn't say everything, but our power equipment, like the woodworking tools, we actually keep those locked, so students actually have to request the material, uh, the machines be plugged in. Um, a lot of the other equipment, there's very low risk. Um, you know, teaching students how to use things appropriately is the biggest uh, area of need, so that, you know, when they go in, you have a cabinet full of tools, each one poses its own risk, but if we're teaching the students properly, they're gonna learn how to use these. You know, I think the best thing I can compare it to is like when we teach kids how to use a glue gun in third grade, you're certainly not gonna put them in a room full of glue guns and say go at it without having <laughs> some kind of safety instruction first and teaching them. And inevitably, somebody will burn themselves on the glue gun and they'll teach the rest. It really is hot, you know? <laughs> um, so we, have a method of reporting things to the nurse if there are any kind of issues. Um, so far, the only major issue in there has been myself. I <laughs> cut myself last summer and setting up the space. Since then, <laughs> knock on wood, we've had minor uh, nicks, but nothing major. Uh, so I, w I wonder if you could just speak to sort of the mission of the AIC and, and sort of, you talked about a five-year plan. Yeah. Maybe just a, a little bit of a preview of what you see in the next three, four years where sure. you want to go? Um, our mission is to create a space in which students feel safe to explore their creative side while recognizing that they can make the world they live in. And we've brought in, instead of a classroom full of one type of machine, which from a teaching standpoint makes things really easy. You know, if everybody's sewing, I know exactly what everybody has. But instead, we've gone from what do the students need in order to really expand their knowledge base and challenge themselves to think about, wow, I have a 3D printer here at my disposal. What can I do? And then it's up to the teachers to come up with curriculum that pushes kids into thinking about those different things. Um, so over the next three to four years, we're very much in the refining process. Now that we have a couple of courses designed specifically for the space, um, getting students into those classes, uh, employing the curriculum that we're developing, and refining that will be part of the process. We'll also undoubtedly have things that we go, oh, that was not a good use of the space. Let's yeah. reconsider this. Um, we've uh, talked about having uh, activities where we can get the community involved. So we wanna be able to open the space occasionally for maybe a workshop that's something that we see happening in the next couple of years where we can say, instead of just, you know, Mendez Middle and High School, let's open this up to the town and say, we're gonna do a 3D printing workshop for anybody in the community that wants to sign up and be able to run something where this was intended to be a much uh, bigger uh, impact than just the students. And while our focus is the students, I think once the community sees that value for themselves, uh, it would also help out. We've tossed around a lot of ideas internally. We had students coming in during study halls, like they might go to the library. Instead of going to the library, they would come to us. Uh, we could only offer that on a limited basis. As I said, we had a couple of classes come in out of their class time. We're talking down the road about how to 
design courses that might be a history class that incorporates a unit that's really going to focus on we're going to design you know instead of cramming one week of museum building into the end of the year how do we design an entire unit around this concept um, those are going to take you know it's, it's a longer plan in terms yeah. of finding the places where to fit those into our schedule and finding the teachers who want to take those steps and we definitely have teachers who are like what can I do I want to get involved in this great anybody else so I guess my only other question for you is just um, going forward I assume we're gonna have to replenish supplies over time and and um, you know, want to make sure that the, the center has resources it needs to continue to be able to do things having that equipment right. without having the other material to, to be used there right. uh, doesn't work do you have a sense of what we're looking at to keep it um, supplied at either the level it is now or wherever you want it to be? I think uh, we've been talking about that and I see this coming year as a way for us to really, once we have a full load of classes in there, to really get a measure of what is gonna be the supply and demand uh, of those consumables mm -hmm. and also, you know, are we seeing wear and tear on our machines that we're gonna have to replace them? Um, we do have some, you know, we charge a fee for our after school activities that covers the expense of the materials those students use. We keep it a very low fee, but it also allows us to build up a little bit of a back end so that we can replace machines if necessary um, or repair machines, depending on what the machinery is. Some things are much easier to replace and some uh, are much more affordable to repair. And those are definitely things on our mind. I don't have a good sense. You know, We've spent so much money getting to where we are right now the annual cost, we're not really sure what that's gonna look like. Um, so for this school year, we're set because we have, we're coming out of the grant, we have the funds from that grant where that would allow us to build up a stock to get us going into the second year. Um, and I think some of our own budgetary, since the courses are shifting, we were able to shift some of the budgetary needs to meet those. Uh, but we don't know, like with this new art course, I have no idea what that's, you know, really going to entail in terms of supplies or the make course. And we try to keep costs down by enhancing everything at the beginning and then creating a situation where the consumables are not the most expensive part. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're not creating a course where students are building new computers every year. That would be an awesome course. It's just <laughs> financially not a viable thing. Instead, we bring in what are called microcomputers. Students learn how to build around a microcomputer using chips and components that are much more affordable and they might have something at the end of the year that really represents what they've done and in most cases we actually recycle those materials. Um, student can take it home for a while, show off what they've done, bring it back. Uh, we have those opportunities. Thank you. Did you oh, I'm good. Thank you. So why don't I ask you to just stay put um, for a second. Paul, um, do you want to talk about the recognition subcommittee update and presentation? Yeah, let me tell, probably do it from up there. Okay. So uh, for those that may not be familiar uh, with what the subcommittee is, uh, the subcommittee was formed uh, to investigate how we as a school committee uh, could recognize those two individuals both within and possibly outside the district uh, for things that embody our vision and values uh, and have a broad or significant impact on not only our district but maybe the community as well. Uh, we last met uh, on May 30th. We agreed upon a strategy that we'll bring forth to our retreat in the summer. Uh, however, Mr. Adams felt strongly that we had somebody that warranted uh, recognition this year. Um, so given that we only had one more uh, school committee meeting uh, before school is out, uh, the subcommittee decided on the first recognition. So um, I had written this before the, uh, the presentation, but um, so back in the fall of 2016, Mr. McGowan had approached administration uh, with an innovative idea um, to create a space that would provide uh, students with the resource to explore new and valuable learning experiences that you just heard. Um, with his leadership and research and hard work, uh, he was able to develop a plan and secure the funding to create what we now know as the Ashland Innovation Center. 
Um, the IC has uh, already created opportunities for the high school students to host after school programs that he spoke of uh, for the middle school and mid -ed students. Uh, and as he said, they look to integrate uh, more into the curriculum for high schoolers next year. Um, as well as the possibility for the community programming. So uh, without any further ado, uh, it is with great pleasure that uh, we present uh, to you uh, quite literally a token of our appreciation <laughs> for your leadership and hard work in, in the Ashland Innovation Center. Awesome. So, thank, thank you very you. much. Paul? Paul, could you just talk about what that token is? <laughs> just, you, I mean, uh, so, so, so the token, uh, the, the subcommittee when we started, um, we, we reached out to all the administrators and, and Jim uh, sits in on, on it. And what it did is it kind of spurned a lot of people talking about recognition, including uh, Mr. Adams, who also developed his own uh, recognition strategy. And so what this is, is, uh, and it was uh, Mr. Adams' idea that we created, um, it's a two-sided token that on one side has um, the town logo, uh, and on the other side, uh, a school committee logo that uh, was created by uh, Mrs. Bates. Um, and so what, what, what happens is uh, Mr. Adams has his own uh, recognition that he does that where it fits within the confines of the schools and, and our peer recognition and things like that um, but uh, so we wanted to have something like this as opposed to hey here's a piece of paper that's going to be shoved in a drawer somewhere <laughs> um, and what, what was what's pretty cool is you know I, I, I actually joked with the gym before I said if we, if we were a little bit ahead of the game we probably could have behind your back had some of the kids to use the laser cutter and, 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 and make a holder for you. But maybe that's still possible. Uh, maybe that's a cool, uh, cool thing to try out with sure. a laser cutter. Um, but yeah, so the, it's, it's basically uh, similar to a challenge coin or something like that you'd, you'd, you'd uh, have in the military. But uh, something that a little unique that we can, we can give to uh, people that deserve it. But, so thank, you. thank you. Thank you again, Mr. McGowan. Thank you again, Mr. McGowan. Appreciate you coming in, and thank you for all your work. Appreciate it. Next item, a Mendez School Improvement Plan. Mr. Kyra. Start that timer. <laughs> Start that timer. We'll be nice and quick tonight. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to present our, our school improvement plan for the 2018-2019 school year. Our folks, as always, worked very hard on this plan, and we're, we're proud to present it tonight. We, we are going to have three goals for next year. Um, one of the goals is very similar to um, uh, two of the goals that we had last year in terms of improving our math scores and our ELA scores. Uh, as you know, last year we really focused on our math open response questions and we will see if, if those fruits of our labor have uh, paid off. Uh, but we do know that we made great strides in terms of uh, some consistency in how we're teaching open response questions, at least at, at Mendez. Uh, so this year, we, we want to really focus on our science, particularly at the fifth grade level, as that's where we take our MCAS, and we'll be able to look at that data to see how we are improving. So the goal reads, based on data provided by the spring 2018 MCAS results, all grade five students will show an average increase of two points on the 2019 science, technology, and engineering MCAS, specifically in the area of open response questions. We continue to um, specify that area, as we know that is not an, only an area of weakness for us at Mendez, but really a statewide weakness. Uh, and we are using a specific uh, teaching methodology now called the CER, where our students are making a claim giving evidence and then providing reasoning. And that came from um, several meetings with our staff to decide that those are the three uh, terms that we wanted to use. And it was really interesting, one of the students when they were being taught this method for math said to our teacher, this is exactly what we do in science. So they're making the connections in the classroom and uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, goal number two uh, is, is for Mendez School to develop a new report card. Um, we have seen that it is time to have a more consistent report card. 
uh, for our entire school. Right now we have some real differences among our whole school for various reasons, but we, we feel as if it's time to, to make sure that uh, the We Are Mendez motto goes beyond just kids saying it in the dining room uh, for their attention, but also to ensure that students are, are being presented with a consistent report card for parents to see uh, from grade to grade. Um, I know that's something that the Warren School successfully implemented this year, and we, we certainly will use them uh, for some advice, but we plan to take a, uh, the whole year to do that. We're going to have a committee of individuals that will work hard to look at other report cards and to come up with a, a report card that will truly uh, show our parents and our community members what our students are doing and how they are making progress throughout the course of a school year. And finally, uh, goal number three is really a continuation of one of our goals from last year. It was written as a two-year goal. Um, we made great strides towards uh, incorporation of a social-emotional learning. I, I don't want to call it a curriculum because that would never be accurate and not an accurate representation of what social-emotional learning is. It needs to encompass everything that we do in our building on a regular basis. Um, but we developed a great committee this year and, and they've provided some wonderful tools and resources for our staff as our first step. We'll present those to our staff uh, during our first two days of professional development. But now we're going to take those steps and we're going to make sure that we are implementing uh, the social emotional learning uh, resources that we found along with the responsive classroom techniques. Uh, many of our teachers are going to be uh, trained this summer uh, due to a, a collaboration with Dr. Vieira's office as well as the Decisions of Every Turn Coalition. So we're excited about that initiative and um, that just is a continuation of our goal to make sure that we're fully implementing social emotional learning for the 2019-2020 school year. So we're gonna take another year to really make sure that we're sharing this up and uh, have things going the right way. But we're moving in a positive direction uh, as we go forward. As you can see, based on what we provided to you, each of these goals directly relates to one of our improvement priorities. We were able to hit all four of the improvement priorities with these three goals. Thanks, Mike. Do you want to just, uh, I don't know if you want to take a minute to, I know that you work with the site council in developing the goals, um, and you've given us that information in the packet, but just for anybody who's watching, just acknowledge who the folks are yeah, on the site council. absolutely. So our, our site council uh, was made up of some really fantastic in individuals. We had Ms. Erin Bannon uh, was a representative from our teaching staff. Ms. Bannon is a, a teacher in our multi-age neighborhood program. Uh, Stephanie Balukonis is a grade four single grade teacher. Uh, she also served in the site council as a representative of our faculty. Our parent representatives included Tina Fatanides, uh, Leah Lester, and Amy Ledicheski. Um, and we were uh, greeted occasionally by uh, Mr. Kendall, um, <laughs> who served as sort of the school committee liaison to our group this year. He did present a note when he didn't show up, right? Yes, yeah, so yes. Okay. Or, or a nice phone call to make sure, so Thank we always you. knew. A any uh, questions or comments for Mr. Kyra? Sure. Um, so you said that you wanted to have more consistent report card from grade to grade. Did that also include from neighborhood to traditional? And that's really what I mean. Okay. I, I want to make sure that all of our programs, whether it be single graded or multi graded, that's a great question. Our single graded and multi graded are looking similar. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that that each student goes home sharing the same information because we are teaching the same curriculum mm -hmm. within our building. So that that is exactly the the goal. Perfect. Thank you. Good question. Good first question. <laughs> Anybody else? Thank you, Mr. Kyra. Awesome. Off to uh, Mendez Dads, our, our big event is tomorrow night. So if you can join us for one of the Mendez, our game show, we're going to be making sure the kids have a great time for fifth graders. Thank you tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Uh, next item on the agenda is the bi Bilingual Parent Advisory Council proposal. And I'm guessing Ms. Silva, Ms. Silva is coming up to talk about that. <laughs> <clears throat> one more thing for Kathy to think about. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, thank you so much for making the time to have me come and very quickly speak about the Bilingual Parent Advisory Council. Um, actually, is, it might be one more thing for me to think about, but it's one of the things that I love thinking about uh, because one of the, the passions that I have is making sure families feel involved in their children's education. And what we know is that we have an ever-increasing number of English language learners in our district. We are well over 100, and we're going to continue to rapidly grow. Um, and because of that, we have to pay attention to uh, some regulation that has changed and come into practice as of this year. 
and one of those regulatory uh, guidance is to establish a parent advisory council for our English language learners and their families. It allows them to get a voice in their child's education. And uh, what we do know is that sometimes they feel very much disempowered. Uh, they too are learning English language. Uh, many times they struggle to uh, both understand the culture and customs of uh, American education. Um, and so this is an opportunity certainly to reach out and to have them become a partner with us in a more full way uh, so that we can uh, help grow and improve our practice here in Ashland. So I wanted to alert you all to that because certainly my hope is that as we go about establishing the Parent Advisory Council for the English Language Learners, uh, that they will become an active voice in giving us some good input uh, to how we can uh, make more welcome and more successful our interventions with their students so that they can go on to do great things that we all know that they're capable of. Thank That's you. kind of why I'm standing here. All right, thanks, Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. Do you see this? So this would be in effect um, next school year? Probably? Yes. What I would like to do once I've you know spoken with you and alerted you to that is send out a letter to all of our uh, families who are bilingual, uh, letting them know about this opportunity and seeking to see uh, if any of them want to be volunteers. And then, of course, the log logistics will have to happen in terms of making sure translation is available or interpreters are available so that we can know what we're each saying right. um, and uh, making sure we have a good communication and dialogue. Any other questions? If not, we need a motion to create a bilingual parent advisory council in accordance with the new regulations. Do I so move? Second. Any other dialogue? Mm -hmm. right. Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Nope. Seeing none. Motion passes for nothing. Thank you guys you, are awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, you can stay for the rest of the meeting if you like. Yeah, right. You. All right. You know, I was thinking uh, if I went before Mr. Kyra, I would stay with for Mr. Kyra. He didn't <laughs> stay for you. Know. He well, did not he stay for you. Else to go. I understand. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. So before just moving on to the next item, um, one thing I realized in doing when I read through the agenda, I did not identify that we have an executive session. Um, that is posted. It's that's all that's it's required. Agenda, yeah, it's yeah, on the yeah. agenda. But just for the benefit of committee members and everybody who's still watching, I just want to flag that that was my omission. Not to and not to reconvene. Yeah, well, that's we'll all it's yeah. on the agenda. It's, it's yeah. fine. It's we, okay. Our habit you, you, of going through this is, yeah. is just a habit. It's a practice, okay. but it's not required. You, you only have to declare whether at the point you enter into whether you're going to come back. So moving right along, um, items. Um, so, but I had one thought on that, that bilingual yeah. parent yep. advisory council. We might want to think about. Um, Over the summer, the liaison. adding yeah. a liaison. Yep. Yeah, yeah okay. I, I yep. agree. Number six, AHS student activities account model United Nations Treasury. Yeah, so uh, the uh, Alicia Egan, who's an uh, English teacher at the high school, is uh, looking to be the advisor for a newly created model United Nations club. And we need to have the approval for the creation of student activities account uh, for this uh, uh, modern United Nations account. Any questions or comments for Mr. Adams on this item? Um, I have a question. Do you know uh, what other towns have these? Modern United Nations? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, I mean, around Pretty here. much all of them around all us. Of them? Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just about interspace, uh, and we used to actually have uh, a modern United Nations years ago. Uh, and it, no one was interested, so we closed out accounts according yeah. to mm -hmm. uh, our um, auditors. And so now we're just, uh, there's interest again. Uh, yeah. I think with all that's going on in the world, it's yep. great. Yep. It's fantastic. And uh, this is just the opportunity to, to do that. I so guess I, I saw in here they want to fundraise for the cost of a model UN competition. So Correct. I guess that's why I was so thinking. Right. So there are local competitions and there's competition. national, there's New York City. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah. That's so, yeah. It's sort of like, if you think about the JSA debate team, yeah. it, it's on, on par with that, if you will. Okay. Yeah. Great. Paul, do you have something too? Well, so was there a, um, we, t we typically do these uh, beginning of the school year, right? So it, 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 what's the reason for it coming well, now? If it, are, if it already doesn't exist, just, I, just out of curiosity, I'm not against it, obviously. Well, I, th I think partly because uh, when we head into the summer, you got Ashland Day coming up, and we oh. potentially may not have a meeting uh, and get, all of the activities before us because we usually do that in September uh, or end of September to have all the activities. This was actually planned to try to get to us before our last meeting, uh, but they didn't have the paperwork in, which then they would have been 
uh, having a concessions uh, and trying to do some fundraising beforehand. That's all. Okay. So, yeah. so that didn't happen. Correct. Right. That's okay. right. Did do we? If there's there was at one point a, a club or organization that still exists, we don't have to create that. I, I would still recommend we do create it, uh, okay. and and at the same time create the activity account. Okay. So yeah. the the agenda we've got posted. For both. Um, but do we do it separately? So let's see, uh, student, student account, account activities account, Model United Nations. And we've got the time pieces, but I don't see the creation of the club itself. It's in the motion. It's in the motion. Move yeah. to create. But, move but, it, but it's not on the agenda. Right. Um, uh, okay. So why don't, why don't we do this? We can certainly create the account. Right. Right. Yep. Okay. Um, and right because the, yeah, if, if we had, if we had gone to the point of creating the club, we should have probably. Done it. So let's just we'll just create the club at our next meeting. It'll be That's fine. two seconds. Yep. Um, so do we have a motion to create the student activities account for the Model United Nations organization, which we will have to create? Okay. We're creating an account. We're creating an account for yeah, for, for a club that we're not uh, approving right now. That we haven't approved yet. Would you prefer to <laughs> delay this until the next meeting? And I I, I, meeting I, I, I think I think this is sufficient uh, for us to address both. Uh, okay, I mean, I, well, I'll listen for a motion from the floor or from the table. Uh, I I, w I would move that we uh, you know approve the creation of the club and the uh, uh, activity account as, as presented in the. Okay, is there a second? In one motion. Okay, mm -hmm. fine. So we have a uh, motion and a second. Any further de debate? Call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Okay. Motion passes for nothing. Uh, number seven, middle school student activity sub-account timepiece newspaper. So, uh, as you know, the uh, we had uh, the group from the middle school come and present the timepiece. Their, their second volume has just mm -hmm. been released. Um, and uh, actually, I read it this afternoon. It's excellent work again. And uh, this is just another account uh, to be set up for them. So uh, if they need to fundraise a little bit to offset uh, cost of supplies to print the, um, mm. uh, the, 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 the timepiece magazine. Unless there's any discussion, do I have a motion? Um, who, I have a question, but okay, I don't know if you can answer it. Um, so if they, are they selling the newspapers and who's, who are they selling them? They may to, to students. They, it, like a nominal, like. Yeah, like 50 cents a dollar, whatever it is, to help offset the cost of printing. Okay. It's typically what they're trying to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I, I move to approve the creation of an Ashland Middle School student activities account for the timepiece newspaper. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? No. Motion passes for nothing. Approval for district-wide co-curricular advisor positions, right. instructional grant coordinator, and approval of stipend for instructional grant so, coordinator. So this is a position that's actually um, will be accepting a donation, hopefully, uh, from the AEFI. Uh, and one of their goals is to get, obviously, more of our staff to participate in the grant writing process for not only the AEFI grants, but for other grants uh, that may be available. It's not just technology related. Uh, but obviously it's AFI's charge uh, and so they're willing to fund it for the year we've uh, worked out with the um, AEA uh, the fee to, that um, for the stipend and so in this instance we need to create the position and we do have two motions here and uh, to set the stipend at $30 an hour for a maximum of 50 hours this again this is not coming out of our funding um, it's coming out of the AEFI who wants to supply um, the stipend for this uh, position. And at some point we'll have a, a, presumably a gift or a donation from them to, to Correct. support that? Correct, yes. Uh, any discussion? Um, well, I just have a question. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> questions tonight. Yeah. Um, so you say up, uh, it would be a grant coordinator for up to 50 hours. Correct. So if we're in school for like 10 months, that's about five hours a month. So is that enough time? It's yeah. what they have in terms of the financial <laughs> resources to provide us. Okay. So whomever gets the position, and yeah. it'll be advertised just like we do any yeah. other stipend positions. Yeah. Uh, so it will not reduce caseload. It will not reduce, uh, you know, their their expectations in the classroom. It's outside of that yeah. uh, purview. So yes. And, and um, just to clarify, so the the discussion about 
the hourly rate and the hour maximum is, is what you've discussed with the AEI? That's AEI. correct. Okay. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. Anything else? Um, so while we take the two motions, uh, do we have a motion to create the advisory position? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? Hearing none, vote passes for nothing. Do we have a motion um, to set the stipend? Should we, should, yeah, should let's, we read Let's it read the, okay. please read okay. the motion. So, uh, what it is. I, I move to set the stipend for the position of district-wide co-curricular advisor for institutional grant coordinator at $30 an hour up to a maximum of 50 hours. Instructional, I think you said institutional. Institutional. Instructional. <laughs> Is there a second for that? I'll second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? None, pa the motion passes for nothing. Uh, next item, student travel request AAHS Make-A-Wish Club to Florida, November 2018. Yeah, so uh, we did have the Make-A-Wish uh, Club come before us. Uh, at the last meeting to uh, get our blessing, your blessing, to start the process of defining when they would be going on the trip. Uh, and so these are, uh, I'm just coming back to you with the actual dates of the trip, so they need approval for that. And those dates are in our motion of November 9th to the 14th? That is correct. Okay. Do you have a motion? Second. <laughs> I need the motion. So the motion to approve the travel request um, for the Make a, Make a Wish Club to travel to Florida November 9th to the 14th is presented. Aaron's made that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Motion passes for nothing. Uh, administrative items, action and or information, Mr. Adams. Uh, superintendent's report. So I, I'll be very quick, right, Mr. Vieira? Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just a couple, couple of things. Um, uh, been obviously graduation occurred, class days occurred, um, attended both events, went off well uh, without a hitch. Uh, Miss St. Kerr, uh, it's become old hat, four years of doing it now. Uh, it's um, sometimes people have to walk me out of the gym because I get frustrated when I don't see things done. <laughs> so I, I, I avoid the high school uh, during that week. Uh, and uh, so that was great. Um, had our first meeting with the Mendez School Building Committee. Uh, was that last week? It was last week. Um, and uh, so, so the deliverables that uh, the MSBA has requested, the eight items, uh, seven have been delivered. Uh, well, excuse me, the, the eighth is the feasibility study agreement, which, so there's seven that really have to be handed into the MSBA at this point in time. Uh, six have been done. I have one left, which will be completed by Tuesday. Uh, so we are well ahead of schedule in that sense. These are all to be, I think, but done by January, right? Uh, October 29th October. Uh, is stop. probably the, the latest. The January 29th is the agreement for a feasibility study. Uh, but October uh, 29th is one of the last dates for enrollment, uh, making sure the enrollment numbers are, are accurate. Um, so so we're, in, we're in good pace uh, there. Uh, you know, the July 2nd was a big date, uh, getting our educational profile done. So we're, that's the only piece that we're missing thus far. Um, the committee had asked at the last meeting to have an update. This is what will take a few seconds uh, with regard to the Helping Our Own uh, Ashland Fund and, oh. and the use of those funds and, mm -hmm. and where we stand today. Mm -hmm. So I did ask Ms. Shields to uh, provide uh, me uh, just an update uh, of how they've utilized the funding. And so I'll just share with you some of the uh, areas because as you know, we did accept another $5,000 donation uh, from an anonymous family. Uh, original uh, donation was $50,000 uh, a couple years ago. And um, so some of the things that we're doing uh, and have used the funding for uh, was uh, back, to su back to school supplies and clothing for numerous families within the district, uh, paid for student participation in trips to Quebec to students in South Africa, um, uh, snacks for all schools to keep in the nurse and guidance offices for, for children who do not have any, uh, paid for field trips for Pitaway students, uh, car seat for a Pitaway family, uh, book fair coupons for all Mendez students on free and reduced lunch, gift cards, clothing, and presents to enhance the lives of 24 district families during the holidays, uh, paid for wa student participation to Washington, D.C. for Ashland Middle School student, uh, gift cards for Ashland families who experienced loss resulting from the home fires this year, mm. uh, prom tickets, six, senior week tickets, three, class t-shirts, four, yearbooks, two, tuxedo rental, uh, for high school students, uh, assistance with car debt that allowed for continued transportation for employment and school attendance of a Mendez family. 
so a as you can see, it's a broad spectrum of where the money is going. Uh, it's hit all of our buildings. Uh, and so it, it does encompass the entire community. Um, very proud of the work that, that Ms. Shields does uh, with uh, coordinating the efforts of, of utilizing the funds. So, so I mean, just these, I think both donations have been anonymous, yes. right? So it's a little hard for us to say thank you, but <laughs> if they're out there, uh, thank you. you know, thank you for um, your contributions to the community, to these individuals, who, students who have been able to benefit from it. Um, I think it's just another great example of the kind of community Ashland is. So that's just great. And thank you to Ms. Shields for providing that info. Yeah. And uh, they, the family uh, is expecting to donate uh, considerable sums of money over the next couple of years as well. They've made it very clear to me that this is what they want to do uh, and provide back for our students. Uh, so we have in the past as well, when we initially set the fund up, uh, we, I sent a letter home. Uh, and we had other donations go specifically into that fund to help students as well. So the fund was created not with the seed money. Obviously, the 50000 came from this one family. Uh, but we've had other families donate specically to this fund to assist in, in, with students. And, and, and <coughs> so how, 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 do, how did they get dispersed? Like, do teachers so, or yeah admin so both kind of teachers admin I, I uh we it, yeah so teachers admin nurses um so guidance counselors uh, we've had students present uh you know and say we know there's this account because it's helped us mm -hmm. and we know there's another family in need uh how do you um a lot of it's word of mouth um but typically we know right we know what families have been um impacted by say the fires or we know what families have been impacted um, because of uh, loss of jobs. Um, mm -hmm. We're having those conversations with kids, uh, and, and, and therefore. Um, and, and they also see it, like I, I, I helped out the one time there were, you know, uh, they, they see children out right. at recess in the wintertime. With no coat. That don't have the right yeah. stuff, right? And, and, yeah. and they either have to be only on the blacktop, they can't do other things. and. And, and you know, so yeah. the administrators and, and teachers know the, the ones that are in need and, and. I was thinking maybe the first day of s school when the teachers come in, do, do you remind them that there is that fund? Um, maybe some. No, we do it mainly in, in the yeah. faculty meetings. Yeah. 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 So since you apparently know who some of these people are, <laughs> you know, it, I think we can ask you just to express the thanks to the school yeah. committee yeah. without yeah. us knowing. I who will, and I have. I have met with them personally and thanked them personally and written to them yeah. uh, as well. And uh, yeah. they are a family that, that, believe me, does not want to be known. Okay. But, um, we're but very thankful. we are very it's thankful. And they know, they know that. Yeah. They do know Great. that. So, yeah. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Adams? No, we'll leave the superintendent's report at that. Yeah. Okay. Paul? I can give a copy of my monthly yeah. report. Do you have any questions? Um, I think I'm fine. I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just full of questions today. Get him in, you have one meeting oh. left for the summer. No. Well, I always like reading it. You, Thank you. So I hope, that, I hope the staff does too. I send, um, out, I send it out to the staff, and um, I'd say I get a few emails back when people say I read this good part. Oh, and good. Every once in a while, I don't think people are reading it, but if I put something in there yeah. um, about you know something I did over February yeah. vacation or, or yeah. a book I'm reading, and I walk in the halls, people say I read that book, uh, or how was that, okay. or how was it? I know people are reading it. Um, I liked what you said. You said not all kids look forward to summer yeah. vacation. Like some don't. Some get kind of mm. sad. Yeah. Or you know, you get into a routine, and then that routine's going to be over. So. For a lot of kids, school is their safe place and their happy place, That's and you it. see it happen a lot yeah. before Christmas break, February, yeah. April. Yeah. Kids struggle leaving. So it's just yeah. a reminder to staff that as excited as many kids are to go home right. and start their summer vacation, yeah. we do have a percentage in a population yeah. of kids who aren't as excited there. and anxiety yeah. and lack of stability. So just right. to keep that in mind yeah. on these last few yeah. weeks of school with kids. Okay, anything else, Paul? That's it. Okay, great. Um, Ms. Bates, warrant approvals. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't practice reading this one, so let's see. Sorry, we have lots of questions <laughs> for you. Questions. We have lots of questions for you about <laughs> so this. Read it at home. Okay, ready guys? Yeah. <laughs> Between May 20, see it says 23. Between May 23rd, 2018 and June 13th, 2018, I, Kathleen Bates, authorized by my signature, tables in the amount of 
$10,511.44. This includes general fund expenses of $438,323.68, revolving expenses of $244,837.53, Grant expenses of $27,113.98 and meals tax of $236.25. Finally, I authorize payroll in the amount of $2,195,272.34. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. You are welcome. Do we have any gifts this evening? We do. <coughs> We have a gift from Oak Realty for $100. Uh, various donors, uh, and that was for the David Mendez uh, Grade 5 Win It uh, at Mendez event, and the various donors of $3,916.59, also the Grade 5 Win It at Mendez event. Uh, weight to, uh, to Ashpack, $217.83, and uh, HS Student Council donated uh, for the purpose of vacuum cleaner parts at the high school. Uh, for uh, for uh, three hundred ninety dollars and ninety five cents, uh, for a total of four thousand six hundred twenty five dollars thirty seven cents. Do we have a motion to <coughs> accept gifts as presented? So, so moved. Once the first. All second. All right. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objection? Any opposition? Hearing none. Motion passes four nothing. What did I skip? The minutes. I haven't gotten there yet. No, yeah, I did. Well, you went out of order, but that's alright. I'm just seeing because you're paying attention. <laughs> Uh, minutes we miss May twenty third. We, we miss our chair. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Uh, gotcha. Minutes of May twenty three, two thousand eighteen. Um, the only thing I want, I think Aaron came in late, and I think you. I left, left early. But I didn't yeah, see it's that. It's right, it's right in the head. Is right it right in, in the there? top. Right oh, top. where is it? I missed it. The people that are president. Uh, oh, there it is. Yeah. Perfect. I'm looking for you. Know, Aaron's like, not going to miss that. It? I'm just letting you know. Just for the oh, record, right we did crisscross on the hall. I'll just. It's perfect there. Right. Anybody have anything else in the minutes? Oh my God. Do we have a motion to approve as presented? Um, yes, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Hearing none. It passes 4 Aye. nothing. Thank you, Aaron, as always. <laughs> now I'll try to see if. Should we do action items just to see if you guys pay attention? <laughs> Member updates. Never. Mr. Kendall. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, I attended the uh, Friends of the Ashland Public Library's uh, annual meeting. They, we call it a meeting. It's kind of uh, oh, a, 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 a gala. Uh, they have a little, little, uh, uh, little party, I guess. Yeah. Um, nice. We had the recognition subcommittee uh, and also the policy subcommittee met. Yeah. Um, high school graduation. Um, I did, uh, I hadn't been in the Ashland Innovation Center before, so I, I did uh, yeah. go in and, and meet with, uh, meet with Chad and, and, and he showed me around. Um, we uh, again had our first uh, Mendez School Building Committee meeting uh, on the 5th, uh, so that was, that was good. We probably won't have a meeting until the fall, I would imagine, uh, kind of quiet until, until we're ready to start looking at uh, someone to, uh, to hire. Um, and then I also attended the Mendez Chorus Concert, which was uh, oh, yeah. fourth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Paul, you said the, the building committee, mm -hmm. you, you're going to hire somebody. Who? What do you mean? Wait, what, what would be the next step? <laughs> project manager. So, 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 project uh, manager. Okay. Yeah, so, so we, have to <laughs> we have to hire the people that are going to do okay. the feasibility study. Okay. People might want to, to do the feasibility right. study. Right, so it's not so doing the feasibility study, it's, it's, it's going and uh, basically signing up with someone to okay. do that. And you'll do that work in the fall? Yeah, we have to Looking first be officially invited into the feasibility okay. phase. Got it. Which will not occur until the fall. They, okay. they, have, they have a date in December and November okay. uh, to get us on into the list okay. to, to come in. Just curious. Yep. Yeah. Great, and thanks. What we're looking to get everything done as early as possible to get that Iterate. acceptance this year yep. where we know what the reimbursement rate will be. Okay. Aaron? I missed Knock. a lot recently. <laughs> Eric, <laughs> Kathy? Um, I just have, we had the policy subcommittee met yesterday. So, um, I, 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 guess, I, I guess you can, you can give some up I didn't give any update on what we're doing and yeah I was just gonna say you, you know we it's always a good meeting we bring we're bringing the policies and so we will have um, 
for our last June meeting. We're, our goal is to have um, uh, some policies to bring to you guys. And then also we're going to try to meet in July before our uh, summer workshop and hopefully have some more policies to bring there. Okay, and I guess for me, it's um, it was graduation. It's really congratulations again to all the graduates, their families, friends, and others. Um, I was I was one of the things I really took away from that was first being very impressed with valedictorian speech, which was phenomenal, um, and then the other was how many students are going on some field of science or engineering. Mm -hmm. You know, the, as people were talking about. Um, where they're going or what they're studying. I was just, it, it struck me. You know, there were, seemed to be a lot of students going in that direction, which is um, great to see, because it certainly seems like there's a need there. But I had nothing else. So at this point, um, what? Action items. Action items. Uh, I'm sorry, action items, thank you. It, it, it is written down. Huh? So the only thing. So we have we have five items on there. Um, one was the update from the subcommittee for recognition strategy, which we did tonight. Um, the athletic fee structure. I think we're doing this. I summer. think that's good. Right. I'm going to change. I asked asked Miss Johnson, and it just didn't get changed. We're going to go the summer for the athletic fee structure, okay. ongoing for the building committee updates, sure. uh, RTI presentation, and substitute p teacher pay analysis are all summer topics. Okay. Um, that that okay. we can discuss then. So sure. next meeting should be very short. Sorry, there was something I missed. Right. The last one. Well, I, I want to add data strategy, and I don't know if it's something we talk about at the. Um, what what does that mean? Yeah. Um, so after filling out five different versions of the same form for my kid to go to Warren <laughs> next year, <laughs> <laughs> we have to figure out a way to do this better. It's awful. Like uh, we filled for registration back in February, we filled out forms that. There were varying versions that yeah. time, yeah. and then when you brought them in for the screening, right. you filled out more. Yeah. They were the same yeah. things. Uh, and and so, can you meet with me on that yeah. uh, outside of this? Yeah. So we can sit and, and look at uh, one of the goals we've had for years. Partly, when I was the principal at the high school, we finally got to a point where we're using online registration for classes, everything, the grade book, everything. We can do it at the middle. We're doing it at the middle school as well. Uh, I would love to have that all opened up. For all families so instead of even sending home paperwork mm -hmm. at the beginning of the year to yeah. update they can parents can just go online mm -hmm. and fix cell phone numbers mm -hmm. fix address mistakes Emergency things of that yeah. all nurse for all those yeah. things um, it's more complicated than than one th would think um, because of merging files that I, I've just been doing it for nine years uh, to know that every school has input data differently like, okay. and when it's different that means it creates more than one track record and you can only have one record uh, that can be opened up to a, a family um, but with regard to the looking at the forms that we're using absolutely we're, we're moving even to more online stuff uh, with even our hiring uh, process so it's now <laughs> going to be online versus paperwork like so I'd like to know what it is and we can sit and yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, it's around yeah. like the you know the parent survey yeah. that we're still waiting Absolutely. on and, yep. and those sort of things of getting good data. Yeah. So why don't we, it sounds like it's largely administrative things, so yeah. why don't you sit down with Jim and yeah. if you guys Great. think afterwards that it needs to be a broader discussion, we'll put it back yeah. on the agenda. Like to, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay. yeah, we need to, and Paul and I can sit on that because yeah. we're trying to, we're trying to create a more streamlined, yeah. yeah, agreed. Any, anything else folks want to uh, make sure we address at our last meeting, regular meeting of the, the year. Okay. So I think at this point we're ready for executive session. I'll make a motion to enter into executive session under section 21A2 to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. This pertains to Mike Morrow and Sarah Davidson and section 21A3 to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation. If an opening meeting, uh, open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, which I do by my motion, um, and that pertains to the custodial contract and not to return to open session. As my motion, is there a second? Second. Okay. Can I have a roll call, Mr. Kendall? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Bates? Yes. And I also vote in favor. So that passes roll call vote for nothing. We are in executive session. Miles, thank you.